So thank you, Rachel, for joining us today. So uh, maybe we can start off with uh, what do you actually suffer from? I have this condition called nuclear polysaccharidosis in general, whereby I'm under category 4A, the smoker syndrome. And in layman's term, this condition is whereby I'm lacking of an enzyme. And the function of this enzyme is actually to discard off the toxins in our body. Since I don't have this enzyme in me, both the good and the bad cells in our body are stored in my petite body, resulting in um, short stature and all this uh, toxins being built up. Yeah. So in the long run, my condition will degenerate. I won't hurt. Okay, and um, what is the mortality rate of the disease? I know there's no statistics, but based on, on what you've gone through, and you, I'm sure you've seen other patients, based on that, what can you gauge as the mortality rate for the disease? That is a very good question. <laughs> Actually, it's very subjective in nature. Um, my, I feel that if, let's say, an individual who are diagnosed earlier and they have gone through all the uh, corrective treatment steps and uh, taken the right treatments and, on, and so on, the mortality rate will, go, will increase over time. Like, um, for my condition, the cervical fusion is very vital, and it is one of the uh, one of the treatment that keeps me mobile until this day. Yeah. If not, I'll be paralyzed or even on wheelchair by now. Right. And um, uh, we have to talk about what you actually went through. We believe that you actually have an education. Yeah. You actually studied law. Yeah. What were the challenges you faced? I mean, because having this disease, you go through a lot. Um, what are the few challenges that you think were the, one of the biggest challenges that you managed to over, overcome to, to become a, a lawyer right now? Well, well, I'm only a law degree holder. <laughs> challenges are plenty. Although, um, whether you are born with a condition or even without a condition, challenges are always there. For myself, uh, I would like to highlight on my, um, the healthcare sector. I was born in the late 80s. Yeah, and uh, during the early 90s, of course, there is no treatment or the doctors don't even know of this condition. Well, they diagnosed me with milk polysaccharidosis, but they could not pinpoint as to which category. So I went overseas to get myself diagnosed. But don't get me wrong, the healthcare in Malaysia since the, the 90s has been improved tremendously. And if this keeps on going, it will do good to all of us. Uh, as for education-wise, I think knowledge is also another important factor whereby not only for people who are like me or our parents, but even the general public as a whole. They have to have a little bit of knowledge on this kind of rare condition so that they are, they are more compassionate in dealing with us. And also, if let's say we were to know a bit of, we have a bit of information about our condition, we would not uh, run helter shelter like hit like chicken, you know, to find information. So I think that knowledge is important. So do not give up on education. See, although I'm with this condition, but I'm always in the uh, mainstream education. So I've actually mixed around with all the other able bodies, and so I feel, I feel less. Um, I mean, I built my confidence over the years, and uh, I think that's very important. Mm, so, as you mentioned, I got a law degree whereby I did my law degree in Brickfield Central College for the first two years and my final year in UK. I went there independently. There are lots of challenges, definitely, but I try to... Um, I, try, I, I try not to limit my life based on my limitations, but I work around it and find solutions how I can cope or intervene it. So, yeah. Um, did, did you... Feel uh, that you had a good support system around friends, family, and people. Definitely, my my family members are my great support system. So are my friends, and also the medical doctors here. If you have any questions or anything, you can always ask them. The nurses are helpful, cooperative. So are the doctors. Even my religious family members, they are always there for us whenever we have any problems or any difficulties. They'll be there to do their sharing. Alright, and um, we have to finish off with uh, what would be your advice for others that are in your position? Well, 
in conjunction with World Rare Disease Day on February 28th, I would like to tell my comrades, which is all the other patients with rare disease, do not give up. I will not promise you that this journey will be a bit of roses. No, it will be full of carnations, daisies, um, whatever flowers you name it. It will be full of that as well. So if you are not choosy and picky, you do well and just fine. So do not give up. At my size, I'm 92.5 cm tall. I'm a working adult. I'm an author. I'm a motivational speaker. And I'm also a finalist for Miss Amazing Malaysia. So if I can do it, so can you. All right, and um, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right, this has been Health Matters uh, episode. We'd like to thank everyone on the episode, all our guests, and also Hospital Kuala Lumpur. Uh, the thing about rare disease is uh, it's not something that we see uh, usually. Uh, it's something that we need to educate ourselves, and uh, we have to admire the strength and perseverance of all the people we have talked to here today. Uh, my name is Jishin Kumar. We'll see you on the next episode. Goodbye.